Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War. We've just won the first of the Peninsula Campaign battles, and we're in the process of rebuilding our force. We did not lose much at all in the way of manpower in that last battle. So really at this point, it's just a, a matter of maximizing our troops and uh, improving the quality of our troops as well. So hopefully that will allow us to continue to carry over and build our forces up as the uh, campaign moves on so that by the time we reach Gaines's Mill, uh, we're in much better shape. This was taken from a live stream yesterday, uh, and so the commentary is coming from that live stream. But I'm going to go ahead and jump out and let you guys listen to the gameplay uh, audio and the gameplay discussion, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. I'll meet you at the end. I don't use my cavalry as a deciding arm of my, my fight. Could have saved a little bit of money by devoting that toward training, but I think we'll avoid doing that. We'll just go with economy for weapons to get some cheaper weapons. And for our cavalry, uh, I don't know what I want to do yet. Alright, so we have this one really well outfitted brigade. Um, we have another brigade that's not outfitted at, at all well. Um, we've got a lot of Springfield 1855s available in the armory. That would be a pretty substantial upgrade for them. It would cost about 40000 so we can do that. Go ahead and upgrade these guys. We can go ahead and upgrade McGowan's forces. Use up about half of our money doing so. Um, yeah, I could mix and match some veterans and some rookies. We could go with, say, go with 600. Get us up to 600 veterans. Keep those stats high. And then maybe go with like a hundred rookies. Yes, sir. And then maybe we go with fifty more veterans. Definitely saves us some money doing that. Um, okay. So there you go. We still did lose a little bit of efficiency due to the officers' rank being too low. So we should actually have a colonel, I guess. We'll do that. We'll have an extra lieutenant colonel in the ranks. Um, so we get that efficiency back. And... At this point, do we want to start rebuilding the second core and use some of that money to do that? Or... What do we want to do? I'm not sure. Yes, sir. Um, we've replaced all of our losses. We've upgraded the weapons on one of our brigades. I don't think we'll have the money to upgrade another brigade. What would the Lorenz cost? It'd be 28000 yes, sir. We go to the armory. We've got some palmettos we probably should sell. Reboard farms. Just a handful. Skirmishers. Koken brothers. We'll sell those. And again, we just got five Napoleons, which I'm going to keep in the armory for now. These will go toward outfitting our second core as we build out the second core. Um, so we could outfit the second brigade with Lorenzes, apparently. It would cost us 28000 which is almost all of our uh, weaponry. I just don't know how, how many Lorenzas get replaced. I'd be worried if we took heavy casualties what the what the replacement rate is on these weapons. But I'm going to do that because that will be a substantial upgrade in their firepower and their efficiency. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we just upgraded two of our brigades now in the first core with rifles. So now we have an entire division of rifles in the first division. Most of the 2nd Division is equipped with rifles. Um, I could upgrade my artillery. We'd probably be better off with a little bit a little bit stronger batteries as well. Um, but all in all, I think that's a pretty good mix. We need to, re we need to name these brigades. We need to name McGow or McGowan's and uh, Walton's brigades. Now that they have rifles and we want to make sure that we don't let them get slaughtered, um, we should probably rename these guys. These are also more experienced troops. If you look at their efficiency, not quite as good as the Iron Brigade or the Springfield's Brigade or the Irish Brigade, but pretty darn close. These are kind of our, our next tier of troops. All right, I like those names. The Bison Brigade, the Red Devils, and the Thundering Herd for our cavalry unit. 
I think this is what we're going to go with, guys. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save the game. And then we're going to jump back in. And let's see here. We've got two more battles before the Battle of Gaines's Mill. Let's actually take a real quick look at Gaines's Mill. I'm not going to fight the battle yet, but we need ideally 30 brigades. So we've got one core of 12 and then reinforcements of a single brigade. Um, so that second core is going to need to be beefed up a bit. The first core is, is a little bit under strength, but probably will be no matter what. And that second, those reinforcements are really to prevent a flanking maneuver by the rebels around our forces. So I'm not going to fight the battle yet, um, but just worth keeping in mind, we will need to strengthen that second core. Hopefully we can have another victory uh, as cheap as the last victory that we had. Um, so let's see here. We've got Seven Pines Rend and Rendeva Rendeva Rendeva. I can't fucking speak. This one May thirty first. This one May twenty seventh. So the next one would be r Rendezvous, I guess. Um, a rebel force is moving to Hanover Courthouse, planning to attack our right. You will lead one division to deal with the threat. We may also we also manage to spot some detachments which have already been dispatched to join you. Okay. Um, because we need every man available for the assault on the rebel capital, we cannot afford to send more help. All right. Um, again, same scenario. We get four plus reputation uh, for a victory, 4,700 more manpower. We didn't even lose 4,700 man men last time. Um, you can see our reputation is up to 56 after yet another victory. M worth calling that out now. We are now 7-0. and uh, So... Today, we're going to try and go 1-0 in our next battle and add to our tally. Um, well, let's see here. I guess we're going to go ahead and do Rendezvous. We can only bring eight brigades to the fight. All right. Um... So we've got too many men. I guess we'll have to pick and choose in this fight. Rumor from a Virginia civilian says that a rebel force of 17,000... Wait a minute. 17,000 is moving to Hanover Courthouse. Our scouts estimate the enemy's strength to not exceed 6,000, but it's still a cause of concern. The force could move southwest and outflank our right. Okay. You must advance and deal with the threat. Our main army needs to keep pressing the rebels toward Richmond so you have no more than one division. Well, that's not really true. We have eight brigades. That could be more than one division. Spared some more detachments. They're on their way to join you. Defend your position at this meeting point. Great. Defend this open field. Um, okay. Where do we start? So we start with five brigades, which is even better. Um, I really don't want to get these good troops decimated. Ideally, we throw some artillery here in the woods and fire into them. These are all my best brigades, too. The Thundering Herd may have to, may have to do some yeoman's work here. All right. I don't want to risk the Iron or Irish Brigade. I think... Can I not move these guys? Oh, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to move these guys up quick. I think the Springfields are kind of our best brigade as well, so let's take a look here. Move the Thundering Herd. Those guys will be mainly in charge of delaying the enemy. Torbert's Brigade and Leppin's Brigade are kind of cannon fodder. That puts us at the max. I don't know if two brigades of infantry is going to be sufficient for this. Um, I guess maybe we cut the cavalry and go with a third brigade of infantry. You know what? Let's go with this makeup. All right, so pause. We're going to send Tolbert up here to these houses where he gets good cover. 
We're going to send Lepin into these woods to the right. The artillery is going to go kind of in the middle. In the middle, but a little bit in the rear. Cavalry is going to go way out in front. And... I'd actually like to get our artillery here along the flank, but I guess we'll see what happens here. I want to try and use this terrain to our advantage. Actually, maybe what we do is we'll move Lepin into these woods, but he's got to move through the open first. He'll move faster. And then once the artillery gets up here, maybe I'll move him into the woods to give him some cover. Uh, meanwhile, the Thundering Herd's going to try and play a delaying action, and we'll see how things go. Maybe we'll, maybe very well we'll lose our first, first battle here. This doesn't feel like a, an easy engagement. It's also a three hour fight. That is a long engagement. The last one was short. That's one of the reasons we lost so few men. Charge! A head-on charge with cavalry against infantry may not be advised. We'll see how it plays out. It's buying our infantry time to come up, though, which is the main reason for the charge. <laughs> our new commander was killed. So that was quick. Alright, pull back. I don't want you to get volleyed. No! God damn it. They had to eat that volley, didn't they? Get the artillery up in the woods. Get this infantry down here in these woods. Get this artillery kind of in the gap. So these guys have, I think, really good cover here. Probably be better if we got them into these woods. Alright. So... <laughs> Alright. So we did actually kill more men than we lost by a whopping total of five. Why are they running like that? The enemy is not attacking with vigor. Which is good, I suppose. Let's actually get that artillery up into these woods. If the enemy does want to advance on the objective, we'll uh, hit him from the flank, is kind of my thought with the, cav with the artillery. Oh shit, there's men behind us! Oh, that ain't good. They're attacking from all sides. Oh boy. Just drop your damn guns and, and go. That artillery battery's toast. Advance him, try and take some of the pressure off. Meanwhile, this artillery battery can wait, stop running. Oh, there's troops behind us. Okay, those are only skirmishers. Our cavalry should be able to deal with them. So they're either going to have to expose their flank to hit our infantry, or expose their flank to hit our artillery. One or the other. And there you go, we pushed them back again, or at least they're withdrawing temporarily. Meanwhile, our cavalry just got pushed back, probably because their morale is shot, because their commander is dead. So let's detach some skirmishers off here. Let's move these skirmishers over to... Wait, why are you advancing? I never told you to advance. 
the fuck back into cover. No shit rebels are spotted. Oh, more rebels coming in on the other flank. Great. Stop riding around like that. You're, you don't know where to retreat, I guess. Literally, they're just going back and forth. These guys are at least in great cover. Oh, they're chasing after our uh, supply wagon, I suppose. Charge into the rear! Or take a volley to your face. Run away, Garfield! Where are our damn reinforcements? Wait, where'd this guy come from? Oh shit, don't charge. Ah! I definitely overextended myself in this battle. I need free. This is just a mess. Why don't you guys go over here? At least get some bullets out of your wagons. Alright, you guys detach some skirmishers. Those guys will go over here, hopefully prevent you from being flanked a little bit. What a fucking nightmare. Well, at least I didn't put my good brigades in here. Yeah, basically is, feels like the Alamo, doesn't it? Alright. We supply these guys. Alt and fire into their rear. Don't charge them. Alt! I don't want you to run after them. Shoot into their backs. Ugh. Our cavalry just got destroyed. Oh, wow. Well, our reinforcements are coming up. Hopefully they don't have any. Oh my god. What are you blocked by? Shoot at the bastards. Detach skirmishers in front.
Yeah, destroy those brigades. Well, Tol Tolbert put up a good fight. I don't know where our wagon went. May have been captured. They're basically driving us, but they're not driving us off the uh, objective point. Which is all that really matters. Aaron Brigade up. So we've lost a lot, about, let's see, six guns there, five guns there. So about the equivalent of one battery. We also lost 700 cavalrymen. But I've got a replacement brigade. I don't feel that wedded to my cavalry, if you will. Most of the troops I have lost are not terribly great in terms of quality. There's a full enemy brigade coming in that way. Now the only bad thing here is the enemy is in woods, which makes attacking them much more difficult, but since we've got Tolbert on one end and our infantry on the other, we can kind of hit them from two sides. I was hoping not to get our good brigades into a, attacking a... Oh, Tobert's killed. No! You'd been doing so well, good sir. Tobert's brigade. You'd been doing so well. Alright, send these guys up here. You're gonna go this way. You're in cover. You guys are most definitely not. But you guys have shitty guns. I'm less concerned about you. I don't want the Iron Brigade to get torn to pieces here. Bring the artillery up. Yikes. Alright, you're too too far forward. I'm gonna have you guys fall back. There's literally no reason to be that far forward. So, they're routing. Send you guys... Oh, skirmishers. Alright. So, I think we're pretty much safe from a defeat. I think the concern is making sure that we protect our troops. And don't get too many more casualties at this point. So it does, to me, it does look like another victory. I guess we'll see. If what Reb's charged? One's on the right? I think would be okay. If they had charged earlier, yes, I agree with you. I'm losing a lot more men than I had wanted in this battle. I may not be able to afford to go all elite replacements. Did the enemy even have any artillery pieces in this battle? Was this all an infantry affair from their side?
Uh, the Iron Brigade's commander. He's a brigade. He was a brigadier too. Damn. Press on. All right. So Irish Brigade Commander is wounded. Oh, I don't know why I thought he was dead. Oh well. Man, they are losing heavily. Are they not in the woods yet? Get in the fucking woods. Get that cover bonus. Alright, battle should be over now. It is. There's no reason to keep fighting. We won a victory, but we did lose about 2,000 men. The enemy lost over 3,000. We also lost 450 cavalry as well as the entire unit at the end of the day. 11 guns lost. Uh, goods, what did we capture? We rescued some of our own weapons, so about 1,100 of our losses, plus 600 captured. Fortunately, we captured some nice weapons, so that'll be nice. That'll help offset some of the costs of replenishing our forces. Um, 2,000 casualties. So actually, we didn't lose many in the Springfield Brigade, only 51 men. We can afford to replace them fully. The Iron Brigade would cost us 23,000, we'll do it. Irish Brigade would cost us 17,000, we'll do it. Bison Brigade didn't even engage. So actually, I think we can afford to replace everybody with elites. The only issue is we lost a brigade here. Now we can pull McCook's cavalry over, place them into the 3rd Division, but that's kind of addition through subtraction to some extent. They actually have sharps weapons, so they're not melee cav, they're more of a um, skirmishing cav. I think we go with rookie for them because frankly they're not good enough to warrant the expense. And then we've got to replace our guns. So we've got some in the armory, we can replace this relatively cheaply. And then these six pound field guns, we've also got some in the armory. So there you go, we more or less replaced all of our losses, but we got worse in doing so. We'll buy Franklin, who is a historical brigadier. So, as you can see there, we got worse in the sense that we spent all our money just to maintain our strength, and we really didn't get any better. Now on the positive side, we gained more reputation. We're up to 60, a 5 morale boost. Um, which means before Gaines' mill, we will probably need to spend some of our prestige to improve our situation. Because right now we don't have a second core at all. Now that second core doesn't need to be huge based on the limit of 10 brigades. But we do need to expand it somewhat. Um, with this additional career point, I think I'm going to increase the army. Ugh. I want to increase army organization, but then we don't, we can't max our brigades out we'll be going in under strength um so i'm going to keep this where it is because i believe the enemy's sizing is also somewhat determined by what we go in with and i'm going to go with uh, uh politics gives us what more recruits but we don't really need that we do need more gold though medicine gives us actually more of our casualties are, are returned to us so we'll actually do that so go with medicine. Um, again, we're in decent shape. Our barracks, we've got quite a few wounded generals. We've got one more battle before Gaines' mill. It'll be the Battle of Seven Pines. Um, we'll have the benefit of winning the last two battles, which reduces the enemy by about 5%. Um, but that's, that's where it's at. Um, 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we continue to progress in the Peninsula campaign. We lost a little bit more manpower than I would have liked, but we're able to rebuild our forces thus far. So, so far, so good in this campaign. More victories and more success to the historical gamer myself. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is... I've been kind of doing a little bit more live... Well, this was from a live stream, as I said. I am looking at doing some more historical content as well. I'm working on a few things offline that I'm not sharing that are requiring a lot more time, effort, research, and what have you. So, certainly, I'm not abandoning the historical premise, but I'm also kind of mixing and matching, as you've seen over the last few months, gameplay with commentary. So, I hope you guys are still enjoying the content. As always, feel free to provide your commentary below, and until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.